Welcome everyone to video number six in the series on design tips for developers. For our next topic in the series, let's discuss about forms. Almost every app we develop has some sort of a form to gather data from the user. In this video, let's look at a not so good user registration form and understand how to gradually improve it by addressing certain UI and UX considerations. All right, we are here at the first version of our signup form, which is a card in a page in our website. We have zoomed in to just the card as it is where our focus will be. Let me go over the UI to give you some context about the different fields. The app is for users to track their number of steps and set up goals. At the top, we have a create account heading and a link to sign in. We then have a couple of input fields, email, password, confirm password, phone, date of birth, which is a date picker, daily steps goal, which is a radio button. And all these fields are mandatory indicated by the asterisk. We then have send goal reminder, where you can opt via email or via SMS or both. Finally, we have to agree terms of service and then we have a submit button. A straightforward sign up form, as you can see. Let's now go over some of the improvements, one version at a time. The first point is about action text. Submit is never the best action text for a form, especially one to create an account. So the first step is always provide context with the action button. Here in the next version, you can see submit is replaced with sign up. Which brings us to point number two, which has more to do with user research. It has been identified that sign in and sign up actually require a bit of thinking to identify the difference. So the second tip is to avoid sign up and sign in if possible and be more explicit with the text. Here in version three, you can see sign in is replaced with login and sign up is replaced with create account. The third point when creating forms is to assume every field is mandatory and only flag optional fields. At the moment, every field except send goal reminder is mandatory. What we should do instead is mark send goal reminder as optional and remove the asterisk from all the other fields. As you can see here in version four. This is cleaner and is what UX has moved towards in the past few years. Specify what is optional and not what is mandatory. The fourth point is about label alignment. It is quite common to see labels of varying length. And this, if you ask me, doesn't look great. One option is to right align the text, which is what I've done here in version five. Although the alignment looks better, it does have an impact on user experience. A user now has to put in extra effort to read the label in the next line. You can try it yourself. Read the list of labels here in V4. And now read the list of labels here in V5. It's a small effort, but something that is noticeable, isn't it? To fix this, as developers, we remove the label and use placeholder text. But with the newfound space, we also try to fit multiple fields on the same line. For example, here in version six, we have removed the label from all the input fields and we have placed phone and date of birth next to each other. After all, the values take less space. Generally, it is never a good idea to combine multiple unrelated fields on the same line. It confuses the users by adding context that we never intended. If you really want to have this, make sure at least the fields are related such as first name and last name. Phone and date of birth have no relation and should be separated which is what I've done here in version seven. Speaking of saving spaces, 
Point number five is about the password field. Instead of having a password and confirm password field, it is a good idea to combine them into one where the user can toggle visibility. And since password fields are tied to business logic, it's also a good idea to provide hint text in what format you expect. Here in version eight, I've done exactly that. Merged the two password fields with a toggle visibility icon and a hint text that says eight or more characters with a special character. All right, we're already making good progress, but we still have a very important issue that we tend to make as developers. And that is using placeholder text as a substitute for labels. It is very important to keep in mind that when a user starts typing in an input field, the placeholder disappears and only the field value is displayed. If you're on a form with 10 different input fields, and you're in the middle of typing something, you would have to clear out the entire field value to understand what data you are filling in. And that is just poor user experience. So point number six, when developing forms, please make sure to have labels. I've done that here in version nine. Now what is the purpose of a placeholder then, you might ask? Well, that brings us to point number seven. Placeholders are supposed to complement the field label. Here in the next version, you can see we have placeholders for all the inputs, but this time they help the user fill in the form field. The email format, the password being eight characters long, the phone number format, and the date format, which is really important. Placeholders are not substitute for labels, but instead should complement them. All right, let's move on to point number eight, which is slightly situational. If you have limited spacing and quite a few options, it is always better to vertically stack radio buttons than horizontally stack them. At the moment, our daily step goal has four options. We might be able to get away with it, but it does make the user think a little bit more which label belongs to which circle especially for the ones in the middle. Does 12,000 belong to the circle on the left or on the right? Here in version 10, you can see there is no confusion when dealing with vertically stacked radio buttons. However, if you do prefer horizontal stacking, button group might be a better option than radio buttons. Point number nine is to reconsider how you show error messages. You can see here in our next version, the error message is displayed to the user before they finish typing into the input field. As good user experience, always make sure the user blurs out of the field before displaying the error message. Another consideration is about error messages overwriting the hint text. If you ask me, an error is when a hint text is even more relevant. If possible, try to make sure you're displaying both of them. Finally, try to ensure the label has a slightly different appearance than the options or the value. Here in the final version of our signup form, I've increased label font weight to 500, which works out better than increasing the font size. I've also added a little more spacing between the label and the input field. So this is the before version, and this is the after. One detail I forgot to mention is that if you were to combine the hint text and the error message, make sure the message helps the user fix the error. Again, small but simple tips and nothing here that a developer cannot do by themselves. All you need is a bit of awareness on how to make forms better. Hopefully this video has given you that knowledge. All right, thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.